Okay, so um, bonjour, everyone. Welcome to the Go Global um, uh, webinar. We have here our participants um, from, um, from today's uh, session, uh, which will go on for about uh, one hour. This is 10 a.m. Lisbon time, um, 11 a.m. in France and, um, uh, and CET time. Um, so uh, a quick introduction to this um, uh, webinar. So uh, uh, this is a series of several webinars uh, and our Go Global um, series um, here at Startup Portugal um, to open up, uh, let's say, uh, other markets and international markets, big markets for um, our startups um, and, and Portuguese startups and any other startups that uh, want to know more about these um, um, these markets. We've uh, we've done um, a series on uh, the UK, another one on Canada, and some of the upcoming ones will be um, Singapore and the um, US market, focusing mainly on Silicon Valley and the uh, the Bay Area. Um, so uh, just a, a quick um, um, a note on what the schedule for today will be. So we'll have um, a welcome address from uh, Stephanie uh, de Freitas from the Startup Portugal. We will be introducing uh, the um, uh, Startup Portugal's role in the ecosystem as a one-stop shop um, to support entrepreneurs, but also uh, giving a brief overview of uh, the French market uh, from a very thorough and, and detailed market study uh, that she that she led. Um, we uh, will also have uh, then following opening remarks from Eduardo Henriques. Eduardo Henriques is the director for the Paris delegation of IECEP, which is the Portuguese Trade and Investment Agency, obviously playing a key role in um, in supporting um, uh, Portuguese startups who want to enter uh, the French market. Uh, and the network itself of, uh, of ICEP uh, has been key to support also the growth of our companies uh, worldwide. Uh, then following, we'll have uh, two, um, um, let's say three uh, very interesting um, speakers uh, that will present firsthand uh, the French ecosystem from uh, uh, um, an agency perspective. Here we're talking about Mathieu Charrière, who represents Business France. Then we'll have um, uh, Florence Lecuyer, who will be presenting School Lab, um, which is an innovation studio uh, with several, uh, with a couple of incubators. And then finally, uh, Paris, uh, Jonathan Sinivasan from Paris and Co, which is a, um, um, uh, an, a network of incu uh, a network incubation uh, around Paris. Um, finally, we'll have a debate panel and how to be an entrepreneur in France. And we'll have uh, Joan Cardoso, the CEO at Lovis, David, uh, David Braga Malta, um, who is a venture partner of Vesalius Bio Capital, and Ricardo Simões, a business consultant, um, who will share also firsthand their experience of what's it like to set up a business in, in France. So uh, again, just um, reminding um, the participants here at our webinar that this is a very important month. Uh, for the French market ecosystem and the outside even European, because we have VivaTech, which will be held um, in, from the 16th to the 19th of June, which is, I think, up in par with Web Summit, um, the biggest tech event in Europe. Uh, and we are proud to say that we have 16 startups from the Portuguese ecosystem who will be participating, uh, and some of them inclusively pitching uh, live at um, um, at um, uh, um, VivaTech itself during the event. So uh, without further delay, again, just asking all um, speakers and uh, here participants at the webinar, if you don't, um, um, if you're not speaking, if you're not interacting, please go on mute and turn off your camera. And so I'll now ask Stephanie de Freitas to uh, give the welcome address. Thank you very much. Okay, great. Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to another one of our Glow Global webinars. It's really great to have you all joining us here today. Um, the reason that we do this is like David said, we're looking to bring people, kind of just give you an introduction and to help you explore what other startup ec ecosystems around the world are doing and to just give you that little confidence boost on how to expand your business abroad. So this is definitely a safe space in which to do that. Um, so that's really exciting. What's going to be happening is we did a internal report specifically for the audience in this webinar. So it's a report on the French ecosystem, um, focusing on the startup hubs. 
and this report is going to focus on all the different actors involved in the startup ecosystem in France, from the incubators, accelerators, um, investment opportunities that are available. Also looking at the different founders and startups that are present that are doing really cool, especially in the innovation sector. And we also kind of look at the different opportunities for Portuguese entrepreneurs um, and kind of looking to expand into France, the different kind of sectors that are most favorable at the moment, um, different business and, and investment opportunities that are present. So this is a report that everyone will receive at the end of the webinar. Um, and it's definitely something I think will give you a really good holistic overview of what to expect in the France ecosystem um, at the moment. And then again, if you have any kind of questions about the Portuguese um, sort of ecosystem, if you have any questions that you have about kind of branching out into Portugal or branching um, out into the rest of Europe, you can get a hold of us. So we have a program called the One Stop Shop. You can reach us on our Startups um, Portugal website. You can find the, um, the One Stop Shop website um, available there. And it's a one-on-one -on -one service. It's a free service where you can meet with me online. You can schedule a meeting and we can just go through any questions that you might have and kind of just give you that confidence that you need um, to just reassure yourself about the different initiatives and benefits and programs that are out there to help you. So yeah, so I think that's pretty much it from my side. Um, I hope you have a wonderful webinar. I hope you really enjoy the amazing content that's got um, gonna be shared today and enjoy. Yeah, I'll hand it back to David. Thank you very much, Stephanie. So everyone who's participating here, whether you're going to Vivitech or not, please make sure you go onto our uh, website and check out the reports we have for France. And if you've missed the other uh, Go Global webinar series for the other markets, also feel free to check out the report that we have there because they're it's a great due diligence. And uh, I congratulate Stephanie for the excellent work done there. And I think it's a must have if you're planning on entering any of these markets as all the insights there are very, very helpful. So uh, now moving on to uh, Eduardo Henriques from uh, IECEP. And uh, please um, go ahead with, uh, with the opening remarks. Thank you very much. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, just, uh, I would like to, to, to just uh, take this opportunity to, to, to talk to you about two points, basically. The first one is, uh, why France? I think it's the, the biggest question for, for everyone is, why France? And I would say that, first of all, because France is really one of the most vibrant ecosystems in Europe. And if you, I can share with you some figures, um, big figures concerning the French market. And 20,000 startups, more than 700 VCs, more than seven, 700,000 jobs created, more than 3,000 uh, 3, corporates and big ones. So I would say that uh, also to, to, to understand the importance of this market is that, uh, well, it's one of the biggest fundings, uh, well, operations in Europe are made in France. So last year, for instance, more than 300 funding operations uh, took place in France uh, with more than representing more than 5 billion euros. Normally, and last year it was a, a typical, it, wasn't, it was not a typical year. Normally there are around 700 per year. France is also the home of uh, 14 unicorns and is also, and this is not, uh, uh, something that is it's very important for Portuguese companies. It's the sixth biggest economy in the world. This is a country that has, uh, with, with whom we have a, a lot of relationships. Portugal is the, well, for Portugal, France is our second partner, uh, trade partner, but also investment partner. And in, at the start of this year, we have this, the, the first figures concerning the, this year. And France was the leading investor in Portugal. There are more than 700 French companies in Portugal. So this is, our, uh, this is, is creating a lot of relationships with Portugal, uh, between Portugal and, and, and France. So there are a lot of relationships and more than that. We have a strong community here in France. We have a big and increasing community of French entrepreneurs in Portugal. So the links between these two communities are developing, and this is an opportunity that you cannot miss. More 
moreover, I think it's very important to notice that the, the French economy is highly diversified and it, it's one of the most innovative in Europe. And we have companies that are ranking in the highest level worldwide in sectors like energy, defense, air and space, retail, banking and insurance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So first is my, this point is France is really a market that you cannot miss and is a market that is developing highly. We have players that are uh, real doing a great job developing this, this relationship. And I would stress, uh, well, of course, started Portugal, but also uh, the French tech. Um, so the second point I would like to stress is what we can do for you uh, as ICEP. ICEP is, uh, as it was mentioned, uh, is uh, the Portuguese Trade and Development Agency. Here in Paris, we have a team dedicated to the whole spectrum of sectors um, and to, we work with, um, I would say, at least 2,000, 3,000 Portuguese companies that are already working with France. But this is, uh, of course, uh, in the, this startup ecosystem, we are also developing our relationship with, the, with Startup Portugal. And what we can do for you is basically supporting you uh, this all uh, the soft landing in the, the French market with information, with connections with partners, clients and players of the French ecosystem, um, access to big corporates. Uh, I have to, to mention here the program that we have launched uh, recently. We are presenting, we are introducing Portuguese startups to the big corporates uh, in France. We have already 20 corporates that are working with us and we presented with a lot of possibilities, a lot of opportunities uh, to Portuguese startups here uh, in France and especially with these big, big uh, French groups. We also, of course, can support you uh, in terms of information uh, about the market, uh, and also, of course, preparing missions to, to, to this market and also uh, connecting with the ecosystem here in, in Paris and all around France. Just a final remark um, concerning our partnership with, um, with the Startup Portugal. Uh, the first example that we have is this uh, joint participation in the in next week in VivaTech. At VivaTech is our first participation as a country. I'm very happy to uh, to, of this collaboration and this cooperation with Startup Portugal and I hope that in the future we'll have more activities and more initiatives uh, together uh, with Startup Portugal and also with La French Tech. So just to summing up, France is really the right choice and this is definitely the right moment. So enjoy your session and thank you. And I said the right partner to enter the French market. So thank, thank you. you very much. <laughs> thank you very much, Eduardo, for your, for your words. And uh, indeed, uh, I must say that uh, from uh, from our side, side of Portugal, we are very happy to have uh, ISEP as a partner, and we really welcome the the openness of um, of uh, of as a trade agency to um, to help these uh, young companies, let's say, and from all different type of sectors uh, based on technology as well to um, to enter these markets and and to give support in these massive events like Vivitech. And I, I remind everyone that uh, uh, out of the six uh, startups that will be pitching at Vivitech, um, the main prize will be uh, six months of consultancy to enter the French market with IESF. So again, thank you very much with um, uh, Eduardo and the ISEP team for this, uh, this support. So moving on now to um, our uh, next speaker. So Mathieu Charrière from Business France. Um, who would be uh, who will be talking about the French ecosystem? Uh, Mathieu, thank you very much for joining us. Um, and um, please go ahead. We are very much looking forward to hearing what Business France does. Thanks, David. So my name is Mathieu. I'm a startup program manager for Business France. Basically, what I'm doing, I'm helping French startup to to scale their business abroad. So I'm managing 15 startup program in more than 22 countries. 
Um, what I would like to do with you guys is like to give you some of an overview about the, the French ecosystem and how much this, this market is interesting. I've been working in this market since like four years and I can already see that the evolution, the structuration, which is crazy. It's like the amount of incubator and accelerator um, set, in, set, set up in France. Like for example, we have School Lab with us and, and Paris and Co, but you have to know that there is like more than 270 incubator and accelerator, which means that the ecosystem is well structured. And when you have an ecosystem well structured, of course, the, the maturity of the startup and the scale up going to be interesting. Just in 2020, we can see like crazy fundraising with like Miracle, we just reached like 250 million, or, or Insects, we just reached like 190 million, which means the ecosystem that France built a couple of, years, couple of years ago, it's very mature now. It can bring you like licorns, which is interesting. And if you compare during the crisis in 2020, you have a couple of sectors that they are very up to other sectors. I'm speaking about software, the, the service as a software. I'm speaking about uh, cybersecurity and, and e-commerce and retail. So this is the, the main, main sector which just like rise over, over, over the other sectors in 2020. Um, let's say I was speaking about the maturity of the ecosystem. In 2021, we just have our first um, scale up. We, we fundraise half a billion, which, uh, which is Content Square. So we are very arriving to this point of our ecosystem is mature and we're building a true scale up. As a startup program manager, I can see that a couple of years ago, the French startup was very focused on the US market because it's a big market. Right now with the crisis, I can see there is like a curve and there are more focus in Europe. For example, I'm helping a lot of startups to, to scale up in Spain, Italy, uh, UK and, and Germany, which means like there is a curve and people understand that the US is not the only target, but you have a lot of things to do. And because of the crisis, you have to be able to do it like closely, close to your country, which means Europe. Um, and also, which is interesting, it's like the, the ecosystem is less centralized be before everything that was happening in Paris. Right now, you are more and more like uh, in the region, like south of France, for example, you have new incubators. In Lyon, you also have a big booster, which is the main accelerator. So you can see that the, the ecosystem is starting to decentralize, which means it's also uh, um, an indice of maturity and everything not happening in Paris. And to finish, I will give you just an overview about uh, Viva Tech because I did it like two years ago and, and uh, in 2019. Uh, I think it's going to be interesting because it's going to be the first event in physics, not in digital. So the people are quite happy to come back and, and not be behind a screen because I know like sometimes it can be boring to spend the, the whole day behind your computer and everything. So it's going to be interesting. It's not going to be as big as it was before because there is only like 5,000 people allowed to get in in the in the salon and um, in the events but uh, i think it's going to be interesting because people are quite excited to just come back and be in physical and talk about business and, and, and meet that's it for me uh, david merci beaucoup mathieu thank you very much uh, we really appreciate this and it's very interesting to see how uh, exactly what you mentioned is the um uh, the maturity of the french ecosystem also reflects the, um, uh, the, the maturity and the development of the European ecosystem, right? And how many startups in France, they're looking to scale up and to go, in, go international um, uh, within Europe rather than moving to the US straight away. So uh, thank you very much for those insights. And again, everyone who, who would like to know more about the French um, ecosystem, feel free to reach out to Mathieu. And again, if you have any questions, uh, please um, use the, the Q&A here in the Zoom link. And now we'll be moving on to uh, our next speaker. So Florence uh, Lucie, who I think is, I believe is um, um, based in Lyon. And, um, and again, as Mathieu was saying, it's not just Paris. Uh, Lyon also could be an interesting place. And again, a beautiful city to live in if you want to enter the French market. And uh, Florence will be um, telling us a little bit more about School Lab 
uh, as an innovation studio and what, what it can offer to startups who want to enter the French market. So Florence, the floor is yours. Thank you, David, and thank you so much for the invitation. I appreciate it. So I'm based in Lyon, but School Lab is, uh, is based in Paris, and I'm today in Paris. So I'm very pleased to, uh, to be participating to this webinar. I've got a short presentation to take you through what School Lab is, and uh, I'll start right away. Um, so I actually, I don't know if you let me move that like that. Um, so what we are, we're an innovation studio created about 16 years ago in Paris. And what we've created is an ecosystem with students, startups and corporates, and together we accelerate their innovation project. We're a mission driven company. We care a lot about doing innovation with impact. And mostly we've done, uh, we've got two sides, I would say, uh, to make it simple, our acceleration with, um, program with startups that we'll talk about today, and our consulting uh, activities with corporates. We also have trainings, and um, to, to facilitate all that, we've developed some digital tools, and, so, and we have co-working spaces um, in Paris. We, so far, uh, we've accelerated more than 500 uh, startups and uh, more than 330 uh, innovation projects. Uh, we are our headquarters in Paris, but we also have a team in San Francisco, in New Delhi and, and Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam. We've done uh, a lot of projects around the world, so we're very international. Uh, today, I'm going to focus just on our startup programs, um, and basically, I'll come back to them uh, just after, but basically, we take the entrepreneur from a very simple idea to a successful business, and for that, we've got different programs depending on what is the maturity of the startup. The first one is La Piscine, which helps you to, uh, you just have an idea and we help you, you know, bring that into a concept. Then the next phase is to grow. Uh, so once you validated the concept and, and the idea, you want to move on to, um, to more uh, acceleration and then seed up is to scale your business. We also have international program with Le Bridge. Um, it's a program in collaboration with UC Berkeley. And uh, also another program, which is really for mature startup that want to develop in the US market. So looking at, uh, at this in detail, La Piscine. Uh, so this is the um, a remote program online. So you can take it from Portugal, um, where basically will help you, um, you know, you've got this great idea, but you don't know where to start. Well, this is the, the program to go for. Uh, it helps you understand the market, who, knowing who's your customer and adapting the concept to the user. It's a 500 euro program and you go at your own pace because it's a, an, an online program. Starter is an acceleration program uh, which lasts six months. And there the idea is that you, you've done the, the, the step before, you validated the idea and you want to develop it. So here we go through uh, different methodologies of design thinking, lean startup, and you uh, learn about how to create your own business, get your first customers, and, um, and develop your team. So this is a 1,800 for six month program. CDAP is uh, the next phase, and that is You've done your startup, you've already got a good set of customers, but you want to you know, scale. So that is another program that we do during six months. And the idea is that you're gonna triple your income in six months and we're gonna help you get some funding and also recruit uh, your, your, your employees. And that's a 5,500 pro, uh, euro program for six months. Le Bridge. Uh, Le Bridge is a year long program and it involves uh, three phases. The first one is a remote one. Um, we help you uh, discover some methodologies, school lab methodology. The next phase is going to UC Berkeley, 
and really uh, experience um, the entrepreneurship uh, program in Silicon Valley. And the last phase is either in Paris, in San Francisco, or in Vietnam with School Lab. This is a 30,000 uh, program, and um, which gives you an official certificate from UC Berkeley. The last program is uh, for startups which are quite mature and in Europe and want to develop in the US. And um, here we help you analyze whether or not it's a good idea, uh, because even, if, even though you might want to go to the US, you might not be totally ready. So we do an assessment whether or not uh, your, the startup is ready for that. And, uh, and because it depends on every startup uh, in terms of coaching and phase, the price is, uh, is on demand. Um, we've got a lot of alumni, like I said, more than uh, 500 startups that we accelerated and that are very successful and have uh, fundraised a lot of money. Um, if you come to Paris, um, we can uh, host you. We've got a co-working space, which is uh, near Saint-Lazare. For those who know Paris, it's a big train station. And- um, very, very central, if I may add. Yes, it is very central, very practical, a lot of uh, connections. And uh, so we've got a very cool uh, place there. So um, if you're looking for a desk, you'll be together with a lot of uh, other startups. We've got about 200 uh, workstations there. So uh, that can be helpful for you. We also had St Station F. Uh, so I'm sure you know about Station F, which is the biggest uh, incubation place for startups in Europe, I think. Uh, for the world, actually, uh, and there we uh, we are partner. Um, we accelerate the program Pépite Ile de France, which is uh, students who are becoming entrepreneur. And lastly, um, if you're not European, you might be interested in uh, the French Tech Visa. Basically, uh, France is helping uh, to attract entrepreneur and innovator, and by giving a, a visa. Uh, which is four year, uh, four year visa, and we are partnered uh, with uh, the French embassy for that, French Tech. And that's it. Uh, so if you have any questions on our activities, the startup uh, will be in VivaTech, of course, um, but you can also send me an email. Uh, I'll be happy to, uh, to respond. Perfect. Merci beaucoup, Florence. Thank you very much. Um, that was very interesting to know more about School Lab. So interesting um, incubation system um, that also has links with uh, San Francisco and with Vietnam. So really wide open, so to speak. Um, and even though, yes, you are based in Lyon, but uh, the incubator is in Paris. Nonetheless, um, as uh, Mathieu said before, uh, it's not just about Paris, but we have very good connections also from France to other um, uh, links as well. So thank you very much, Florence. And now I'll uh, move on to Jonathan uh, Sini Vassan. Did I say it right? Yeah, that's right. Thank Perfect. you. Thank you very much. From uh, Paris and Co. So uh, Jonathan, please uh, let us know a little bit more about Paris and Co, which has a very interesting concept. Um, yeah, thank you. Incubators in Paris. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, David. And thank you, uh, everybody. Um, I'm very glad to, to, to be part of this uh, uh, presentation and this is uh, even so my name is Jonathan uh, I'm in charge of the international uh, question um, at Paris and Co which is the economic and innovation agency of Paris so um, I would be happy to give you the main mission um, of Paris and Co and, uh, and also to, to introduce you in a few words our um, acceleration program uh, or incubation program and give you um, some word about our incubator and just to let you know uh, oh, you uh, are, uh, as an entrepreneur, you may be interested to, to be part and to, to join us uh, for, uh, for um, uh, an exhibition program or to be part of our incubation program. Um, should I give you some words from my um, uh, PowerPoint presentation? This is here. Um, I think, yeah, that's okay. Perfect. Yes, we can see it. Yeah, I can see it. Okay. Um, 
Yes. So, um, in, in a few words, um, uh, Paris and Co. is, as I told you, the Innovation and Economic uh, Development Agency of the Paris metropolitan area. Uh, our main job, uh, in a few words, is to help entrepreneurs to create jobs. That's uh, our main mission. Um, before, I would just like tell you that we are on something like 90 uh, people working on the agency. And the main point that I would like to tell you is today we do not going to take any equity or stake on the entrepreneur uh, on the on the on the startups that we that we're going to 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 accompany uh, but we are a kind of facilitator or intermediary between the entrepreneur and some uh, fans uh, when the entrepreneur is looking to fundraise we're going to, to to be the the link and to introduce to the entrepreneur um some vc or private public funds and so we are not going to 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 take any equity in the entrepreneur and then in the in the company that we're going to help so our funds are coming from the public sector as i told you from the city of paris from the startups and also from the private sector um so from the private sector mainly um from um as you can see we do have um what we have what we call um a club open innovation you know that is a, there is a big gap between the, the world of the entrepreneur uh, of the startups and the world of the big corporation. So through this uh, club open innovation, we are going to facilitate communication between these two worlds. So it means, um, uh, so this club open innovation is composed of big French and international companies, like you can see, and also public institutional partners like the, of course, the city of Paris, but BPA France or um, many, um, uh, we are a partner of uh, Ministry of Finance, of Sports, et cetera, et cetera. So our job is to make the connection between these two points. And um, sometimes the big corporate will be interested to invest in the startups and the startup will be able to introduce in a few words uh, the, the, the solution or the innovation uh, to the big company. So when you will be joining um, as an international entrepreneur, this uh, club open innovation, you will be able to introduce to you uh, to this big French company or international uh, uh, company your products. That's uh, the, the first point, the first mission of Paris and Co is to link this to word. Then um, I would like to make a focus about our um, incubation or platform on uh, our incubator. So today we you have here the map of Paris and we have here the, 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 the large network of our incubator. So today we do have something like most 15 innovation hubs. So one incubator is focusing in one activity sector. Just, just for example, you, we have the sports one called Le Tremplin, Le Welcome City Lab focusing on tourism, et cetera, et cetera. So just to tell you that each incubator is totally autonomous and independent. They have their own call for application once a year. So I invite you as international uh, uh, entrepreneur to check on the website of Paris and Co and to see which one would be interested for you. And then just to, 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 to reply for the call for application for each incubator. So once you are uh, being selected, you're going to you're going to 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 be part of her two or three years incubation program and our job is to make you um, uh, as comfortable as possible in our ecosystem, in our innovation ecosystem. So just for example, if you are an entrepreneur, uh, part of Le Tremplin, which is a sports incubator, we are going to help you to grow and to make you connected with all the key um, uh, partners in the sports industry. Just for example, um, we have recently um, um, helped um, a US company, part of Le Tremplin, were to be linked with the Paris Saint-Germain Football Club. This is just an example of uh, the partnership that we can uh, offer you. So, um, uh, and then as I told you, once you are ready for the fundraise, we are going not to invest in your company, but we are going to introduce you to some potential financial partners, private or public one. So this is in, in, in one, in, in a few words, our, our main uh, incubator. So I do invite you to check on the website of Paris and Co and to um, see which incubator will be interesting for you. The latest one we have uh, launched is, fun, is focusing on the, on the FinTech uh, uh, services, on the financial services in La Défense called Le Suev. 
And uh, each incubator has a team of be between five, six people um, focusing and specialists and expert on, on the activistic sector that I mentioned. And also each incubator is funded by big French company. Just for example, Le Suev is funded by Paris and Co, of course, on the city of Paris, but also by La Société Générale, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, um, as I told you today, we do have more than 500 incubator, um, 500, sorry, 500 uh, entrepreneurs, part of our incubator. Um, among these 500, let's say that something like uh, 10, 10, between 10 to 15% are uh, international uh, company. So you, we, you, you are more than welcome to be part of our program. Uh, just in a few words, we do have um, a specific um, acceleration program uh, dedicated to um, international and foreign entrepreneur called the Paris Landing Pack, which is a five weeks uh, intensive incubation program in Paris in one or of our incubator. Um, there is a call for application. It's between it's something between two or three times a year. Uh, it was in standby during the last year due to the crisis, uh, to the pandemic crisis. But we're going to launch it again maybe at the end of the of the year. So uh, have a look on our website and you will get all the information. Just in a few words about this program. So we are going to. Um, host the selected entrepreneur coming from all the world and help them to be connected in Paris with the right partners and just make them understand if Paris and France and Europe, uh, if they're coming from another continent, would be uh, interesting uh, marketplaces. For, for them. So this is quite interesting. And um, I really invite you to 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 part to be part of this uh, of this uh, uh, program. Um, and to conclude, um, will be um, interesting to give you some word about our um, communication and uh, events department. So as I told you, each incubator is totally autonomous and independent. They do have their own uh, events. But uh, Paris and Co, let's say, as the holding, as also is also organizing each year some big events. And then uh, let the next one will be the hacking of the Hotel de Ville, which is a big event once a year in the city hall of Paris. The mayor of Paris is hosting and welcoming all the entrepreneurs from all the world during one day. The next edition will be on the 28th of October in Paris. And uh, it will be the possibility for any entrepreneur to show a, a startup meetup to meet some potential French other partners, um, to be able to pitch in front of um, investor, public or private one, and to meet also the elected people of the city of Paris. So this is quite important, even for uh, the um, Paris innovation ecosystem. And the next one will be on the 28th of October. So um, thank you for your attention. I remain at your disposal if you have any question and give you my um, email contact. Just uh, let me know and I will be very pleased to, to reply to your question. Thank you. Thank Perfect, you, Jonathan. Thank you very much. Uh, we need to speed up a little bit, but uh, a very interesting concept, really, having uh, several incubators across this one yeah. city, um, each one for each vertical. I just have a very quick question that I'm sure uh, some of the people attending uh, are also thinking about that. Um, so I'm assuming you might have some startups who are uh, linked to several or two at least verticals. Do you guys do the, the, the due diligence of understanding, okay, you as a startup, you analyze, you should go into this incubator? Yeah, of course. Uh, that's a good question, David. Thank you. Um, yes, um, we do have, let's say, uh, what we can call a, 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 a committee selection uh, 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 department. Uh, um, and they're going to check before that you're going to apply for any um, incubator or any um, incubation program to check with you about your business model uh, uh, and to check what would be the best, let's say, um, uh, incubator that you can work with okay. and, and to understand how you're going to grow. So it depends, you right? sometimes it would be a, a, a two or three incubator possibly uh, mm -hmm. as a partner. So yes, we have a, a dedicated um, mission um, team working on that kind of issue okay. and going to advise you what would be the best way for you to grow and what would be the best partner that you can work with. Yes. Perfect.
Okay, Jonathan, thank you very much. You're we welcome. need to move on to uh, our debate panel. So I'm going to ask all the participants to turn on their cameras. So all four of us, please uh, um, stay uh, uh, with their camera on and you don't need to mute the, the microphone unless you have some background noise. Um, because even though this is a sort of a round table, but we're doing it virt virtually, let's try to make it as, as interactive as, uh, as possible. So uh, before I start with the questions, I'm going to ask uh, each one of you to introduce yourself very quickly and in one short sentence say what you do and or what your company does. So Joan Cardoso, let's start with you. So I'm the founder and CEO of Lovis and Lovis is an insure tech startup. Uh, in a nutshell, basically what we are doing differently is that we enable uh, our customers to have a single, uh, basically a single subscription for all uh, things insurance. In, in France, people call us the Netflix of insurance because we provide this sort of category solution. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, David, what are you about there? Um, David here. Uh, I'm a venture capital investor uh, dedicated to the life science field in, in Vesalius Bio, Bio Capital. Perfect. And Ricardo? Hi, um, I'm Ricardo. I'm an international business consultant based here in Paris. I was uh, a former uh, director for the French and Portuguese Chamber of Commerce. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much, guys, for introducing, your, introducing yourselves. Um, and we are very much looking forward to your inputs. And Joao, I'm going to start with you. Um, and us as Startup Portugal, we've been following your story um, uh, very actively and very excited about um, how the growth of, uh, of, of love is. But uh, so tell me, uh, also from a personal perspective, as a Portuguese person, what's it like to found a startup in a different country? And why did you choose France? Honestly, I think at the moment in the, in the world where we live in, that's in, inevitable. And the reason why is because I think actually more than, when I look at love is I think more than being a, a Portuguese or a French startup, I think we are an European startup. And I think, I think we have to follow that new model. And I think the new model is that if we need to be European first. And that means that uh, when, we, uh, when I look at love is from day one, we had offices in both France and Portugal. From day one, we had people from, I think from the day when we were four or five nationalities. And so I think there is definitely a new model that emerged. I would say that simply put, Lovis would not exist today if we had started uh, with the Portuguese market. If we would have followed the typical model of uh, being born in Portugal, launch in Portugal, and then think about uh, going somewhere abroad. Uh, basically the ambition behind the project and the, 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 the market where we are in that would not be an option because the investment required per, to launch an issue tech startup that would not make the numbers work in a small market like Portugal. That's a very interesting perspective because depending on your needs, um, the fact that um, you have offices from day one um, across several European countries that might cater for several needs. One from maybe the um, uh, the labor and qualified labor in one country, then the investment opportunities eventually. But that's a that's a very interesting uh, perspective. Um, David uh, Bragamata, moving on to you, and knowing that um, you are uh, a, a, a founder, I was I was going to say ex founder, but you are an ex founder and you are a current founder as well of of a companies. Um, but so you came from the startup world and now work for an investment firm. Uh, is it easier to invest in a French startup? Um, and knowing that both companies that you founded uh, were are Portuguese, uh, would you would you have done maybe something like João, well, having an office right away in, in France? What's your perspective, both as a founder and now as an investor as well? Yeah, so I think to be completely transparent here, and it's it's known but not publicly widely available. In fact, Lim is a French company. 99% uh, of things happen in Lisbon, but the yielding company is, is a French company and the investment was done through, uh, through a French entity. Uh, and that was exactly to the point. Uh, I think specifically now these days for, for life sciences, Portugal is not um, as known as, as of a market. Um, and so it's easier for international funds to invest closer to their geography and then for our uh, lead investor in Lim, in this case, Venture, was much easier to invest in France rather than in Portugal. And so we structured a company like that. Um, also, I think going more broadly than just jurisdiction and they're going to the point of, uh, of, of geographies, 
it's still difficult to get senior experience talent in Portugal. And I think this is across the board. Life sciences is particular because we do not have uh, a very strong industry during, doing drug discovery and, and med tech development in, uh, in the country where France has actually a very strong industry. And so if you think at the point of the company when you are really scaling up and you need to bring top talent, it's much easier to fish in a pond like France than it is to fish in a pond like, uh, like Portugal. So it does make sense to try, as you mentioned, the, the world is global. We can do a lot of things remotely to try and leverage different geographies for what they can offer best. Uh, and France, for sure, is a geography where you can find more capital. Uh, I think it's almost a record in, in continental Europe, the, the amount of funds raised in France. Over the last five years, more than 10 billion euros have gone into new funds in, in France. Um, this is not comparable to the amount of, of funds available in a lot of other European countries, even the big ones. If you compare with Germany, for instance, France is significantly uh, better, uh, better off. And so if you can combine what multiple geographies bring you uh, the best, I think it's it's the way to go these days. And, and for sure, uh, countries like France and other countries in Europe can offer you more access to capital and also more access to senior talent. And so if you can combine both, I think it's the best case scenario for you. Perfect. So, uh, and I think um, uh, knowing the fact that Lim is a French company, that really answers the question straight away from your past experience of launching the company in France and knowing that also there's more investment and more uh, senior talent, let's say, in, uh, in France as well. Um, uh, but still, I'd like to know even from your, both of your perspectives and Ricardo, then um, I'll let you jo jump in as well. Um, it, is it okay? Is it well perceived in the community, so to speak, that you have a, a, a French company, even though uh, most of the operations are being done in Portugal and the people um, that are the face of the company uh, being Portuguese, Portuguese as well? Uh, that is both João and, and, and David specifically. I mean, I, th I think we are in a new world and I think uh, actually uh, it, it was very funny in the beginning because when I moved to France to start Plavis uh, mm -hmm. and created the assemble that an initial team, uh, when I would, I would meet investors, many of the investors would come and ask me, oh, so you decided to launch Travis in France, so do you have a, a, port, a French girlfriend? And, <laughs> and so did you move here because you're for a girlfriend? Uh, and, and so it's, it, was, it's, it was funny, and, and that's very recent, so I moved here in 2017, and, and back then, the community of international founders was still small. I would, see that, I would say that more and more that it's so common particularly after the Brexit, that people look and say, okay, I'm going to launch my startup. I want it to be international and decide to do it in Paris. So just to say that, uh, actually, I would say that in the beginning, we were puzzled. But when I would say, no, I, if I've actually analyzed, it was a very rational decision to, French, to choose the French market. Then we'd say, okay, fantastic. Let's make things happen. So I, th uh, I, I can only say good things. I think I've been very, very lucky with my experience so far. I've been very welcomed by... Uh, by French people in general. Uh, I mean, I have a lot of French people on, on our board uh, as advisors, and I, I couldn't be more thankful uh, in the way that the market has received us, in the way the French, the French have uh, treated us. Uh, it has been, honestly, it has been way more positive than my sort of my wildest expectations. And I'm like, I don't think people really care, to, to be honest. Uh, I think the only f issues I faced was learning French bureaucracy and navigating a little bit of the French bureaucracy, which is particular. Uh, but once you get through that and you get advisors to help you with that, I think everything is fine. But from an investment perspective, no one cares. And if I can tell people that, um, for our case, for instance, uh, that the junior talents uh, and the technology came out of Portugal, it's much better to have our operation there because you get the people, you get the access to technology and, uh, and so on. Uh, they uh, they understand the argument. I think I have a funny story, correct? So th there was a big debate about Portugal being a geography and so on. Um, and so I took the CEO of, of the fund, and this is a major fund in uh, in uh, in France, to to visit Portugal, in particular to visit Fundação Champalimau, where where the technology originates from. And the first thing she did was take a, uh, a selfie uh, with the river in one of the balconies and said, "We found a new geography to start doing investments. How come we weren't here before?" <laughs> Um, and so I think Portugal is well perceived, although the, in tech, of course, the, the perception is changing in life sciences, we are still uh, on, uh, on the way. Uh, but these days, people don't, don't really care about that, as long as they recognize that it's a good business plan, a good team, a good opportunity, they are going to go ahead, irrespective of where you are from. Uh, 
I mean, I think in the end of the day, what we are doing, like for example, in, in the case of hobbies, everything is very factual. And what I mean with that is that if you do the right things, the numbers speak for themselves. And so I think we are lucky to be in a, in a, in an industry that, uh, and in startups particularly, that if you do the right things, you can see the immediately the results uh, in terms of growth, in terms of all the different metrics. So I think. In, in a way, it's funny because there were some of people in our team that were in the beginning like, oh, oh, oh uh, people are going to look at us. And I said, okay, the, the numbers speak louder. So I think we just need to be good at what we do. And, uh, and, and then the results uh, uh, and, and things will take care of themselves. That's okay. That's interesting. No, I, I, now I need to ask a question of Ricardo because he's been on mute for way too long. But uh, uh, thank you guys for your inputs on this. And Ricardo, so um, I mean, as, as David was saying, uh, one of the hardest things was to to learn, or the big barriers was to learn a French bureaucracy. Even learning French as well. I didn't. I don't know if you guys were speaking French already from the start. But so, uh, uh, Ricardo, in your opinion, if you want to enter the French market, what should be your first concerns? Comparing to running a business in Portugal, meaning what would you do? What, what should you anticipate? What you should avoid? What should you be aware of eventually from the French market and ecosystem and setting up a business there? Okay, we, we listen from an investment point of view, uh, things have changed. And I think uh, capital um, looks for no country in particular. It looks for uh, a good product, a good business, good founders. And um, and so there is no uh, point, um, there is no uh, friction point there. In a business uh, perspective, perspective, I think um, what um, France is a highly competitive, uh, highly regulated, complex 65 million person. So um, I think a, a founder should ask themselves, uh, three questions, three main questions uh, before deciding to approach the market. One of them is um, what can I bring to the market that isn't already there? How can I differentiate myself? Um, and in terms of uh, product, customer experience or price, if you have some 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 of these, these uh, um, questions answered, uh, you're closely to, uh, to be success successful on, on the market. Afterwards, can, uh, can, I, can I scale it? Uh, do I have the resources um, to, to scale it? Uh, and uh, last of all, can I sustain what differentiates me from my uh, competition that is on, in, in the market? And um, how, to do the, how to do this? is, um, and to think about this, it's one of the main um, points to consider before entering the market. Uh, I, I recommend for, for instance, for uh, B2B, uh, for companies that are working in a B2B market to uh, look for, France, France uh, has uh, big, big companies uh, in every industry. So uh, in, your, in your industry, you have firstly 10, 15, 20 big companies, select 10 and go for it, um, uh, work, uh, work um, try to work to enter, um, the, um, uh, to, to, to approach them and, and try to develop, to create references, uh, to create references. If you, if you strike one of them, you'll have the references to then expand naturally your, um, your, your basis. Uh, if you're uh, a B2C um, company, uh, if you have, uh, you, you should look for, uh, you should look for, for instance, marketplaces that can um, uh, accelerate, that can accelerate and can um, uh, give you uh, more exposition uh, to the market without uh, doing um, uh, high investment. Uh, and afterwards, um, if you, um, uh, more recommendations, you have to have a presence in the market, a permanent presence in the market. It's, uh, it's, it's, um, it's fundamental to your, to your development. 
Um, it doesn't uh, come here and just go to an event, um, meet people, and then leave for six months and uh, happen to, to uh, re-encounter them uh, on another event. That doesn't work. You have to be in, in, in constantly uh, here, um, working them and um, just find the right, right opportunity and the right timing to, um, to, to, to do business with them. So um, you have to invest your time and resources in, 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 in spending time really in France, having both feet, let's say, in, in the market. Yes. Right? And, and from, your, from your, your, your experience as well as um, the, the managing director of, of the Portuguese and French Chamber of Commerce, um, what are the main cultural differences um, you know, in doing business uh, between the countries? I mean, uh, from my experience as well, knowing in the French market, um, lunchtime is more closer to 12 to noon, 12 o'clock. You don't have to wear a tie anymore as much as you used to have um, uh, a few years back. So uh, any subtle cultural differences that uh, one must be aware of? Actually, it depends. It, it depends. It still depends on on the on the, the type of company. If you're talking about startups, uh, scale ups, uh, ecosystem, it's a very um, free environment. It's a very um, uh, open and casual environment. If you're um, going to to um, the the big companies, uh, you'll find it's more it's still uh, a more formal uh, environment. Um, and, and, uh, and the relations also uh, are more um, in some way, some distance and more formal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and um, so I want to ask, um, uh, Davida, I'll go back to you because some of the other questions has, has uh, been answered uh, that, that I shared with you previously. So uh, David, in your experience, um, what is the mindset of, um, of a French investor and how should you approach them compared to other investors? And um, um, and with uh, as um, approaching your uh, VC company specifically, what would you recommend? So I think it's always better if you can have an intro. I think it's still whatever you you think about it. Uh, deals that come through to a warm intro are deals that go to the top of the priority list. It's not that we don't look at all deals. It's just that there is so many hours in the day and things that are warmly ha welcome. Having having the intro that re uh, the reference that Ricardo was mentioning before, right? Exactly. Having a local stakeholder being a, a good reference. Mm -hmm. And so manage your networks to figure out who knows you. It could be even a third wheel, third degree connection. But it's always better to go through a connection than uh, than, than not going through through connection. I think particularly in France, I still believe we we are facing. A, a dual approach in the sense that there is global ambition, but there is also French is a large market to begin with, correct? So if you can show your French strategy for a lot of investors, that's always relevant. Uh, if you're already the king of France, uh, if you're going later stage, then even even better to, to go for, for a, a global strategy. But we also see more a trend and a trend, and I think particularly in life sciences, that business is, is global, so um, the French angle is losing importance once you you approach uh, uh, a French uh, a French fund um, uh, globally. Then, besides getting a, a warm intro, uh, if not, then I would always recommend that once the pandemic allows. And by the way, some biotech startups were the ones first responding. So without venture capital investment, we would still be way back in terms of fighting this pandemic. It's always important to, to remember the impact that what we are all doing here around the table has for, for humanity. Um, um, uh, it's always better to meet in person. So figuring out where we are going to be and try to get slots to speak with us, it's much, much better to have uh, an in-phase meeting or now Zoom meeting, but it's scheduled and our time is committed to to you than going purely via uh, via the cold call. I think that's still very challenging to be able to achieve. Okay. And um, so, Juan, do you agree with that? You've had to uh, raise some money in France, I'm assuming as well. And uh, and with that, do you agree with David was saying? And any specific uh, networking tips that you can recommend for a startup that wants to enter the uh, uh, the the French uh, uh, the French market? I mean, I totally agree with David. I think it's a market and I think it's not just a French thing. I think it's everywhere. I mean, I think network, it's really paramount. And I think it's really important that we build relationships and we, and when we go and meet someone that we go and meet with context. Uh, but I think on the positive side, it has never been so easier to meet people and to reach people. I mean, 
uh, if we would be talking about 20 years ago, it would be different. Now we have so many tools from LinkedIn to others. And, and I think people are generally very open to meet others. And, and so I think that's, we're very lucky to be uh, living in the moment where we are. Uh, and, and I would just say that my feeling towards investors is that when I compare to US uh, VCs, I think in, in, in US VCs tend to be a lot more about the vision, about the, the sort of the grand, the, the grand message, the, the big dream. I think uh, French people are much more excellent driven than, uh, than, than sort of big uh, image driven. So uh, it's, it's quite interesting to see those differences. Uh, and I totally agree that there is, I think it's easy these days. People are, are very open to meet new people. Uh, I think one just needs to be open and, and to be active on that and, and be strategic on that. Um, Ricardo, I'll start with you. Now, this final question, because we're really running over time. Um, uh, so any final tips for a startup that wants to enter the French market? What would be the one main advice that you'd give to a startup entering here? I would say to, to, look, to look to your side, to look for a partner in the market that you already are, are uh, in this case, Portugal. Look for someone that is in the same market that can be complementary uh, to your offer and bring a good proposition value. Uh, product is not dissociate, dissociated of service. And this is uh, one, of the, one of the main things that you can, that you can consider and that can um, bring you su successfully to the market. Perfect. Thanks, Ricardo. David, um, David, your, oh, David, your, um, your, um, your uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, your two cents for a, a, yeah. a Portuguese founders that want to enter the French market. Yeah, so I think if you're a founder, better to find a good found, as I think Ricardo mentioned, find a good founder friend in France that is able to, to pull you in. I think that's the, the easiest way you can you can come in. And I'm pretty sure that you're going to know someone that you have a good relationship with that, that can bring you on board and, and show you around uh, a little bit. I think that's, uh, if I had to do it, that's how I would do it. Yeah, well, Final words to you. I mean, my, my if I would if I could give one suggestion, I would say to the Portuguese founders that try not to use the traditional model, or sorry, basically try not to build a, a Portuguese startup and then go abroad. Try instead to build an European startup from day one. And what I mean with that is not, and I think location is what matters the least, but is the old cultural aspect is to to assume from day one that you are an European startup, and therefore you are going to to have a different culture from day one. And I think that's paramount to them to succeed because I think it makes no sense in the world where we live in to have uh, an ambition to launch in Portugal. No, I think we really need to think at least European. Mm -hmm. and, and, and nonetheless, going back to, to, to the famous sentence of uh, um, uh, act global, think local, but nonetheless is to understand that um, you're part of a, a country, but you're moving into another country, having some sensitivity to the culture, but knowing also that we're part of a bigger European project uh, somehow. I think the main takeaways here from this discussion also is um, fr France has become much more um, open, so to speak, that you... Um, uh, that even you come or your founder or you're originally from other countries, uh, uh, even from a VC perspective, we're looking to companies as having a value proposition from a European perspective and that we are playing in Europe and this is something that is um, stronger. So uh, um, I want to thank you all the participants for your um, for your time here, also the the, the panelists and the speakers from uh, from the previous presentations. I would like to remember uh, remind everyone who's um, who's attended this uh, call uh, that we will be sharing the contacts and and this recording, and also uh, obviously you'll get access to the um, to uh, the presentations uh, via email soon. Uh, please uh, keep in touch. And also uh, look out for the next um, Go Global web, uh, Go Global series webinars. And again, if everyone is still here, and if you'd like to turn on your camera, we'll just take a quick screenshot. Um, and for good memories of, of of this call, and I hope everyone's enjoyed. We don't have any questions from the audience to to reach out. Uh, for the context that, uh, that's been shared and that you received as well from your email. Perfect. All right, guys, thank you very much. Have a, a, a good day and uh, we will be in touch.
again, thank you very much for your time today.